Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ software and design series. And this is the third part where we are revisiting the observer design pattern. Now, in this part, I want to talk about lifetimes of our observers because this can actually result in a little bit of a problem. So I want to go ahead and take a look at a design decision that you can make to, well, just make your code a little bit more secure, taking advantage of RAII or resource acquisition is initialization in the C++ programming language. It's actually a big part of C++ and one of the nice things about C++ to have this sort of deterministic destruction. And you can go ahead and check out my series if you need to for that. But let's get back to talking about Observer and how we can restructure some of our code to be a little bit safer. So just to give you an idea of what we were talking about previously, here's where we landed on our second try. So we had our Observer here. Uh, this was our interface class here where we just need some uh, notify function here. And then we have our watcher, which implements this observer here to create this class here. And we implement on notify to just print out from our watcher here. And we have a name here to you know, do something interesting. And then for our subject, we have likewise the interface for our subject. And we have the ability to add observers, any type of observers. So we get this nice flexibility here using C++ is uh, polymorphic uh, behavior here to be able to essentially determine what kind of type we're working at here. And again, have different types of observers stored in our forward list. And then we have our ability to remove an observer and of course, to notify all of our observers of this particular subject. Now to make use of this, we then create a concrete subject here that implements this interface. Okay. And then we have some code down here. So, in this example, we again have an instance of our concrete uh, subject here, and we have three watchers that are going to be uh, subscribed um, or observing this particular subject here, and then we notify them. Okay, and then we had some different examples here. I'll put this back here uh, where we are uh, removing a watcher and so on. So let's go ahead and just compile this again so you can see it running. Uh, this is where we left off. Again, being able to notify all three of our observers here, remove one, and then notify all the remaining observers. So again, this works fine and well. But one thing we haven't really discussed is, again, and this is the central idea of this video is what happens if one of these watchers disappears and we notify all. It's the responsibility of us to remove this observer explicitly right now. So that could be problematic, especially as our software gets more complicated or grows. And this is also a little bit of a burden that you're putting on the user in a sense to remember that this happens. So again, maybe they should remember explicitly that this happens. Uh, but we want to be able to create some way to do that in a clean way. So let me go ahead and just sort of demonstrate this. If I create another scope here where we have another watcher and we add that watcher uh, to our subject here. Okay, so when this leaves scope here, since I'm just allocating these on the stack here, watcher three disappears. So when I notify, I still hold a pointer or in this uh, list here, it's still part of my observers list. So let's just go ahead and see if this code compiles here. Um, and well, I have to remove uh, line 70 here. <laughs> That's why I had it removed here. Uh, but it does compile, right? Because I do have watcher three here. I can add it as an observer. I can't access it outside of the scope. That's why I got that uh, error here. But if I actually run it, let's see what happens. And now I am getting some uh, abort here and a runtime failure here. OK, so I'm terminating called without an active uh, exception here. Essentially, this thing has gone out of scope. It's in our list of observers. Again, that's the problem here. So one way that we can fix this is with RAII. OK, so how are we going to do that and where are we going to do that? Well, one thing that we can do here is let's go ahead up to our watchers here. So basically, the idea is that when I create one of these watchers, something that I can observe, I want the watcher and sort of the purpose of creating it is to just subscribe immediately to the subject. And that means I should probably keep track of who my subject is, and then I can remove myself from the subject if I am destroyed beforehand. So if the user forgets to do it or, you know, for whatever reason, this object goes out of scope. So let's go ahead and 
uh, change our constructor a little bit and some of the data that we're holding. So what I'm going to want to hold on to is um, an instance or a reference to my actual uh, subject here. So I'm just going to set it up like so, uh, and I'll just call it uh, M subject. And then let's go ahead and uh, here I'll go ahead and set up the uh, the reference to the subject that I am creating uh, this observer for. Uh, let's just call it subject, something like that. And let me rearrange my terminal just so you can see this again in one line, the change here. OK, so now the idea is here that uh, for this particular uh, watcher, whenever I create it, I will immediately and I'm going to do this in the initializer list, set M uh, subject here to the subject. OK, so there it all is here. So now it's now at the very least, we know who we're observing. OK, and that might be an important detail to have in general um, in your system anyway. But uh, the advantage is now is as soon as I create this observer here, what I can go ahead and do since I have my subject. And again, I'm, I'm passing this in by reference so that it you know, has to be something that is created. Well, now I can just call subject dot uh, and we call this uh, add observer. And well, what's the observer that I'm adding? Well, it's this thing that I'm creating. So I'm just going to hold on to the address uh, of this particular watcher that was created. OK, and that's the basic idea. And now on the opposite side here, what we do with our constructors, so I'm going to go ahead and create our destructor here. Uh, and of course, it's a watcher. There we are. Uh, now for our watcher, what I'm going to make sure to do is with our subject, because again, we're holding on to the reference here. I'll remove our observer. OK, and the observer that I am removing is going to be, well, this observer. OK, so same idea here. Uh, and I go ahead and look at our uh, interface here. Again, we're just removing wherever the observer is um, from our observer list here. OK, and we're doing this from our subject. Uh, so that's the idea here. OK, so let me go ahead and write this out in comments and then we'll test it out. So the change is uh, we will automatically register our watcher to a subject when we create it. OK. And then uh, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we will automatically uh, remove our watcher from whatever uh, subject, uh, I subject that it is observing. OK, and that's the idea here. OK, so now let's go ahead and try this out and see if it fixes our problem in our code here. So now when I create our uh, object here, what I need to actually do is pass in the subject. So let's go ahead and add a subject here to each of our watchers. And again, this is going to create for each of our watchers and automatically register them. So I can actually now get rid of this code here. Um, whoops, let me actually, uh, there we are. And let's go ahead and just comment out each of this. Uh, that were registered. And before I do our experiment with our scope here, let's just go ahead and make sure this is working. And I'll have to fix one little thing here. Since I subject is declared after uh, watcher, let's just forward declare it here. Uh, and you might want to, you know, separate these things out into different uh, files <laughs> at some point here. Uh, but that's the basic idea here. OK, so we have our observer. We have our watcher. Uh, we have the I subject here. Uh, oh, and uh, one or two little typos. Uh, this needs to be M subject, where we're adding our observer. That's our member variable. And don't worry, I'll scroll through this code one more time uh, as we proceed. Uh, but that looks good. And let's go ahead and give this a try. And let's see if it does basically the same thing. Um, but without having to, with the subject, add the observer. So just again, when we create the observer, which is watcher in this case, a concrete implementation of our interface, um, then it should just register itself. So let's see. Um, oops, just a couple uh, uh, typos here. Let's see what we got to fix here. 
22 here. This is saying for declaration of class I subject. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and let's look at uh, I subject. I think I probably need a constructor here. Uh, I subject here so that it can be uh, instantiated. Um, ah, and it's telling me incomplete type. So yeah, I need the uh, instantiation here. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's see here. I might have to just actually split this up into different files because I'm getting this incomplete type, which basically means um, if I'm forward declaring um, this particular interface here, I subject, well, I, I basically um, just need to separate these out into different files here. <laughs> so that we have the complete type, and that'll be the right uh, thing to do going forward. That's because, again, for this class, um, for instance, since we're making use of I subject as a uh, member here. Now, if we made this a pointer or something, then we could sort of get around with forward uh, declaring this, and that's sort of the uh, pimple idiom. But uh, let's just go ahead and separate these out uh, into their own uh, classes here so that we have the uh, complete type here uh, for us. So what I'll go ahead and do here is just separate this out into its own header and implementation files in a snap. All right, so with that brief intermission, let me just go ahead and run this here to show you the files that were created. So again, I've just created individual CPP and HPP files for subject and the observer. And let's just go ahead and walk through them again to see where this lands. So for our actual main project now, we have quite simplified things because I'm just including the I observe and I subject, which gives me access to my watcher, subject, and so on. Now, I could split this again into many different files, but I think you get the idea of it. So now, just briefly looking at I observer, uh, let's go ahead and look at the header file here. Again, you'll go ahead and see that I have the uh, simple imitation here, and then our watcher uh, interface here. And let's just go ahead and extend this out so I can see everything. Again, just the definitions here to make things simple. And for the same thing for our uh, subject, let's go ahead and look at the header file. Again, you can just see the definitions here. And again, the purpose of why I'm doing this is because, well, I needed the complete type here. So again, we want to follow some proper C++ practices. <laughs> so that's the idea. And of course, you can clean up this uh, sample code as you see it. And just for completeness, let's go ahead and open up uh, the iObserver uh, CPP, just so you can again see uh, what was set up here. Let me go ahead and get everything here. Again, nothing crazy. But again, the whole purpose of this lesson was that now we can register our watchers directly to our subject here. So that's the idea. Really, all this work just for two lines of code here and a change to the actual constructor here. Okay, so that's the key highlight, and I'll go ahead and revisit this in a moment. So that's our watcher class. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the uh, subject CPP again, just so you can see that I've put all the definitions here. And again, nothing's changed here at this point. Okay, so now let's get back to our experiment and see if we've improved our code here. So I've put in the subjects here for each of our watchers, and now we can actually compile this program. Again, making sure that we're compiling the new CPP files here and our main. So go ahead and compile. Whew. This time, no errors. And I'll go ahead and run our program. And it's doing the same thing here. Okay. And as you'll notice, I didn't need to explicitly add the observers. I'm doing this or I'm registering as I create each of these observers or watcher, again, which inherits from the observer directly to, well, what I want to keep track of or, or be observe uh, the, this particular subject. So now let's get to our original experiment here. And let's say if when creating watcher number three, it happens in a different scope. So I'm going to simulate this by just putting uh, brackets here. And let's go ahead, or rather the curly braces, so that this happens in a different scope. And then by the time I notify, hopefully watcher three will have been removed by the time I say, hey, let's just notify everyone here. OK, so if our new improvement to this design pattern works, then we won't have any crashes and this will compile and run. 
So no compilation errors. If I go ahead and run this, now, whew, again, our Watcher 3 has unregistered itself successfully using resource allocation is initialization. Okay, and just to go ahead and bring this back onto the screen here, let's go ahead and open up our uh, implementation. So in our concrete class, that's right here, and I'll go ahead and make this a little bit uh, smaller for you uh, so you can see. Let's see, just give me a moment here. All we did here was in our watcher. So in the concrete implementation, I chose to say, hey, let's go ahead and just register this subject right away here. Um, and again, that's usually the purpose when you're creating one of these watchers because you want to watch something that's interesting. But you might still want to preserve that functionality. Uh, so meaning that you have the ability to still manually add observers um, or maybe manually remove observers if something in your system happens. The key again, just being that when you notify all, you wanna make sure that you're only notifying objects that are still alive. So ownership and lifetime matters here. Now, some other things that you might wanna keep in track uh, or, or maybe some design decisions that you can make have to do with the type of pointer you're using. We're using raw pointers here. So again, there's improvements that could be made with say even uh, unique pointers and these types of things. Uh, that we probably want to be using for our watchers. Anyway, folks, with that said, that was a little bit more code refactoring for just a simple change. But again, that idea of being able to, I'm just going to put it up here one more time because I think it's really the key piece here um, on the code here. Uh, being able to register our observer with a subject. That's what I want you to uh, take away from here. Just this idea here, just register right with the subject immediately. And the only code changes we had to make were uh, these lines here to our constructor. And now our observer, again, if I look at the class here uh, and onto our code is keeping track of its subject. And again, this might be useful in general to know who you're actually watching and you might write some query functions and these types of things. Anyway, folks, that was part three, and I hope that was useful for the observer pattern. That's really starting to wrap things up, but yet we're going to want to go ahead and add just a little bit more functionality to this pattern as we continue this series. So I hope you're enjoying it. Comment below. Uh, let me know if this was easy for you to follow um, or if there are you know, other videos that you'd want to make to help explain something if something was confusing here. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for your time and attention, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.